All right, so the Consumer Product Information System. Consumer Product Safety Commission. The Consumer Product Safety System. Look, look at the words that are coming out of my mouth. And repeat after me. Consumer Product Safety Commission. Jeez, are you good? Let's go. So, so the CPSC has released its latest report on ATV deaths and injuries. And let's just say it's pretty friggin' depressing. Hey, do you wanna stay up to date on the latest ATV trails, reviews, and news? Obviously you do. So hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you don't miss our future videos. All right, so the CPSC recently released its annual report on ATV deaths and injuries. So this report actually has information dating all the way back from 1982, when they initially started collecting this type of information, all the way up through 2017. So the total deaths, total deaths, so we're talking about ATV injuries in North America <laughs> has surpassed 15,000 in this report, and it comes up to a total of 15,250. So if you're curious where your state falls, they actually break it down by state, and Texas is leading the pack. Now, Texas, uh, just so you know, this like high numbers in this category is not a good thing. I know you're Texas, and you like to, you know, bigger and better and all that. Not today. Like, bigger number, bad Texas. Just get that out the way right now. So the remainder of the top five include Pennsylvania, not too surprising. West Virginia, also not too surprising. California and Kentucky. Really, Kentucky? Like, let's be honest. Out of those top five states, ATVs are prevalent in all of them, but more so in the top four. Like, come on, Kentucky. You're not even, I don't even think you have the most ATVs or trails or anything in the Midwest. In fact, I'm pretty sure you don't. So I feel like you had to work at that. And Dirt Obsession, another YouTuber from Kentucky. I'm looking at you, brother. So I'm just saying... I don't, you had to work for that. Like you had to work for that. And again, high number, not a good thing, Kentucky. All right, so if this topic isn't freaking depressing enough, let's talk about children dying. And I'm not gonna, I'm not judging any parents out there, nothing like that, but you know, maybe this will make you think a little bit more about children's safety if you're, if you're a little bit on the super loose end, I don't know. So in 2017, 26 children under the age of 12 died died we're not even including injuries here on a lighter note i guess well not a lighter note but on on a positive note in 2005 that number was at 77 so that is at least a decline now this report does go on to mention that even though 2017 is well over they will still get trickle in numbers so most of these numbers in the past couple years will in fact rise but that still sucks like that's terrible now if we bump that age up just a little bit more to the age of 16 Children under the age of 16 account for more than 20% of ATV related deaths. Like that's crazy and crazy sad and freaking depressing, right? Like that's insane. And we're only talking about deaths right now. So let's start talking about injuries. If we start including injuries in 2017, there were 93,800 injuries. That's insane. That's 257 injuries a day. That's crazy. And what's even crazier is that's almost a positive thing in the sense that they're lower than they have been in the past. In fact, in 2007, it was 150,000 injuries. And by the way, I should say, these are injuries that resulted in an ER visit. So we're not talking about someone stubbing their toe or rolling their ankle. People that went to the emergency room. In fact, here's a really interesting graph as to what type of injury was actually sustained. So as you can see here, contusions and abrasions that made up 20 percent fractures that made up 27 percent like let's be honest that probably doesn't surprise too many people all right so i want to show you another graph and i'm going to be honest i'm going to relate this to helmets all right man take it easy like if you start talking to people about not wearing a helmet they're going to think you're preaching to them and they're just going to click off the video and we can't afford anybody else clicking off the video we need all the views we can get all right all right i'll make it quick i'm not going to preach it or anything like that but if you look at this graph, you'll notice that over 27,000 ER visits have been due to head or neck related injuries. That's 29% of the pie. That's a lot of freaking head and neck injuries. So I'm just going to leave it at that. In fact, let's move on to something a little lighter. And that is if you look at the course of this over the last couple of decades, numbers have actually declined. Why is that? I don't freaking know, but I could speculate and I'm gonna. And I think there's a few reasons, but number one, I think a lot of it comes down to the ever increasing sale of side-by-sides. Yes, ATVs are still super popular, but so are side-by-sides. And especially when we compare them to even a decade ago or not even a decade ago, 
And it's hard to argue that side-by-sides are not actually a safer machine with things like roll cages and seat belts, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I hate to say it. Well, I don't hate to say it. They're safer, right? So I think that's one of the big reasons. And there's awareness and better helmets and, you know. All right, so let's go ahead and move away from super freaking depressing and something that's super freaking funny. And that is this. Now, if you did not watch our recent video on ATV theft devices, you might want to after this. And I'll go ahead and put a link in the comments down below and, and pin it as the top comment so you can check that video out. So basically, two individuals in an F-250 that I believe was stolen, or at least the plates were, decided to steal an ATV. A 1982 Yamaha, by the way, because if I'm gonna risk going to prison for a felony, I'm definitely gonna do it on a 1982 Yamaha, and that's not a thing against Yamaha. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So luckily, KETV in Omaha, Nebraska, managed to get their hands on this footage, and it's gonna show two individuals pull up behind a business. I, I think it's a high V from what I was able to Google, but I couldn't actually verify that. Pulls up behind a business, scopes out this ATV, and decides to put it in the back of their 250. And they, they struggle at it for a while, and they finally manage to get it up in the back, okay? And what do you do when you manage to get a stolen ATV in the back of your truck? You drive off as fast as possible because you don't want to stick around. You just stole an ATV. So forget putting tie downs on. Let's just get it mostly in the back and then get out of town. Because that, that's how you steal an ATV right there. Are you kidding? Like, it, criminals. Like, what are you going to do? I don't, I don't know what to say. So obviously it pops out of the back of the F-250. Real shocker there. They hesitate for a second as they probably realize what's happening. I can't even imagine the conversation that's going on between these two individuals in the cab. And then they just take off. So there you go. So what was a 1982 Yamaha at a business is still a 1982 Yamaha at a business. Probably just not working anymore. So kudos. Kudos to you for trying to steal an ATV. Not at all, you freaking idiot. Who's excited? Are you are you excited? I'm excited. You I'm you excited? I'm ex I'm excited. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm I'm excited. You are you excited? You're excited. I'm excited. You're excited. I'm excited. Are you excited? No, I'm excited. You're excited. Why? Why am I excited? That's because Destination Polaris season I want to say 8. I think it's season 8 started on April 7th. Now, if you don't know what Destination Players is, it's actually the number one rated off-road show in North America. Dude, I think it's like the only off-road show in North America. Come on, man. Like, why can't you just give it to them? I'm just gonna give it to them. They said it, I think it's true. We're just gonna go with it. For example, this is the number one YouTube off-road channel for sure within like a couple zip codes, probably. So we all got our own thing. I don't know why you just can't leave me alone about it. Now, Destination Players plays in both North America and Canada. And now that I've said that out loud, I realize how stupid that sounds. Destination Players plays in both the United States and Canada, which are both in North America. So, if you're into off-roading and ATVs and side-by-sides and all that kind of jazz, which you probably are, I don't know why you'd be watching this, you should check it out. It's pretty good. They cover everything from races to new builds to awesome destinations to check out. And as a bonus, if you do like it, that you can watch them all on YouTube. Everything, like all the previous seasons are out on YouTube. So you can binge it if you want or not, whatever. Now, I got to say, I'm be honest with you. It's called Destination Polaris. So if you're a Can-Am lover or a Yamaha lover, not saying it's not going to be on the show, just remember that it's called Destination Polaris. But still a good show. Check it out, even if you are a Can-Am lover, and see if you like it. So that's all I got. Thanks for watching. And, and, I'm going to throw a third one in. And, I hope to see you on the trail. Or recording this through 19, nope. And, and, subscribe if you haven't already. That was a really bad one.